is the native to North America species and Orderatum is a species that's commercially grown in California. Uh, the Erdum species, we call it boulder, I'll be referring it to as boulder during the whole time and that's because we got it from Boulder Mountain in Utah and the other two species, the other species, Odoratum, has two different parts to it and they are, it's a diploid and polyploid and most of you know what that is so I'll be referring to three different things, diploid, polyploid and boulder during the whole presentation. So we're looking at the secondary metabolites that are produced by these plants and secondary metabolites don't have a direct function in plant growth or development, however they're used in the plant defenses. So what our hypothesis was that the diploid and the polyploid of the anthocentum odoratum will not have a difference in the nucleus size or the guard cell length or the density of it. And the other hypothesis that we came up with was when tested against the root associated bacteria of those specific plants and also non root associated bacteria, it will not have a difference in the inhibition zones that they produce. So our methods uh, include the, uh, the Fuchsine the uh, staining protocol. Uh, guard cell size and quantification includes the abaxial and the adaxial epidermal peels. And Hydrosol, to, to collect hydrosol, it's a very common meth procedure known as steam distillation. Um, after steam distillation, typically you produce, uh, you produce herbal distillate, which is, called, which is known as hydrosol, and it's collected in the collector tube. On top of the herbal distillate, you actually collect oil, which is the essential oil, or, and that, which contains the secondary metabolites in it. So, however, our, our procedure, sweetgrass, the the grass that we dried and then put in the pot right here and then we did the whole steam distillation with did not obtain any essential oil per se so we, this is what we ended up with this high herbal distillate with nothing on top so it was it, it, it was a bit of a challenge and we couldn't use that for the next part of our procedure so we had to come up with a procedure of its own that had never been used before to to isolate the, or not isolate, but to concentrate the her hydrosol so we could actually use it in the Kirby Bauer assay. The, the herb hydrosol that we collected was therefore used in a vacuifuge. Vacuifuge is a centrifuge with a vacuum. It works on the same basis of centrifuge. It spins around really fast and it has a vacuum. So when the temperatures increase, the lighter molecules start evaporating off and the, the heavier molecules are left off. So as you can see, this is where we start with at the first, before the first cycle with 1,000 microliters in each tube and we go from 24 tubes to 2 tubes with about 200 microliters in each and this is the concentration difference as you can tell by the colors. This is after 7 cycles. We have to go around 7 to 8 cycles depending on the temperature. After obtaining this concentrated hydrosol, we had to figure out what was in the hydrosol and if it was anything usable. So we looked at the mass spec, mass spec of it. Uh, we used a GCMS and we figured out there are three different things in the uh, in the compound and there were I mean in the co uh, concentrated hydrosol. There were coumarin, dihydrobenzofurin, and dihydroactin and dialyte. Um, dihydroactin and dialyte. I'll get to that, but that was a surprise that we didn't expect in there. And so. After figuring out that we were the secondary metabolite that we were looking for, the coumarin, was in there, we decided to move on with our project to the next step that was the Kirby Bauer diffusion assay test. And that, I mean, that's a very common test for most uh, microbiologists slash botanists and uh, it's, it, it requires a petri dish with a uh, solid agar base and you, you do your, uh, your lawn of bacteria lawn and then you put a disc in the center of the, of the plate and then you put a certain amount of the essential oil on it to to determine the the strength or the the concentrate the strength of the of the essential oil that you're testing to figure out the right amount of the concentrated hydrosol that we were supposed to use we used a pilot study before with the three different uh, amounts of concentrated hydrosol we used 3 microliters 6 microliters and 9 microliters of this concentrated hydrosol and determined that 6 microliters was the best which gave us the best inhibition zones 9 was too big and it did not work good and 3 was too small of an amount and did not disperse enough so after doing the Kirby Bauer diffusion assay test, we did the bacteria cell and colony morphology to determine the bacteria that were in the soil that we were testing it against and the root associated soil bacteria that we were testing it against. 
And as you can see, our results, the nucleus, after the nucleus staying, we had, there was no difference in the nucleus size of diploid or polyploid, which went on with our, with our hypotheses, which agreed or, you know, agreed with our hypotheses. The guard cell size and quantification, however, almost all the data points, except one which I'll go over at the end, but uh, all the data points agree, uh, said that the, there was a significant difference between the amount of guard, the stomatal density, the amount of guard cells there were, and the guard cell length there was there. However, just that one part, the abaxial and the adaxial of the polyploid plant, that was the only non-significant data in the whole guard cell size and quantification data. Which, this is the part that did not agree with our, our hypotheses, and th this is where our, our hypotheses was challenged a bit. Uh, mass spec, as I already said, revealed the three different compounds in there, coumarin, dihydrobenzofurin, and dihydroactinodalide. And the coumarin was highest in the, in the native species, and dihydrobenzofurin was the lowest in the native species. And right here, the dihydroactinodialide is, the, is a pheromone which was surprising because that we did not expect to have in, in, a, in, a, in a sweet grass plant where you don't see any wind pollinated pheromones and that was the surprise that we didn't, this was not a supposed to be a wind pollinated pheromone. And on grass you usually have wind pollinated pheromones. So. And as you can see, the amount, the difference in the amount when, when the diploid and the, and the polyploid plants are grown in the garden, you can see that it's selecting to evolve against, against this, what, against this uh, dihydroctinodialide, which is found in the native species, but towards the, towards the dihydrobenzofuran. And if you look at the size of the plants, the guard cell length, it's 40.36 here, 42.24 for the abaxial on both. And the erdum, which is the native, the boulder, is 32.22. So it's, when, you, when it's evolving, it's evolving towards the size of the plant, towards the, or the dihydrobenzofuran, but it's, it's, not, it's not going towards the hydroactinodialide. Um, so this is the kirby bauer diffusion assay results that we had. Our, our mean inhibition zone sizes deferred significantly, so that was great. However, they were, they were, even though they were a little bit small, they still had a significant difference between each other. So after looking at the, the graphs of, these are the graphs where we're looking at the number of, inhibition, number of plates with inhibition over the days when we measured them. As you can see in the first graph, this is against the antisanthum odoratum hydrosol concentrate hydrosol of polyploid. So there were three different oils, polyploid, diploid, and boulder. Polyploid's the first one, diploid's the second one, uh, and uh, boulder's the third one. We tested this against root associated bacteria of itself. Of, uh, uh, so this is polyploid, so we tested it against diploid. Then we tested it against garden, which is a non-root associated where it had nothing grown, and a boulder, where the boulder was grown. So we had four different uh, bacteria to test against, and it showed the best results against diploid, which was surprising. We were expecting it to show a good result against itself, which is polyploid. And as you can see right here, the same deal. We did not expect this result either, and it shows that the antisanthum odoratum, the diploid oil, the concentrated hydrosol, was best against the non-root associated bacteria, where the garden bacteria and the boulder concentrated hydrosol, which is what we expected in all of them. However, this was the best result we got was it was it was most resistant to, against its own bacteria because it had grown in that environment. And as you can see, the boulder, the endosanthum erdum root associated soil bacteria had the, the most inhibition zones over the time, and the other zones had died out faster. In our morphology, we grew our bacteria um, in a greenhouse, and therefore we had a varied temperature. And according to a teacher I met actually here in Botany, uh, so, uh, you know, BSA 2013, said that uh, that is because of the fact that you grew them in greenhouse, and the varied temperatures allowed you to grow different uh, different bacteria in your plates, which was great because it gives you more variation and therefore more data. So, like I said. Uh, part of our hypothesis was supported, part of it wasn't. The part that was supported was that the nucleus size remained the same in, diploid and bo uh, in the diploid and polyploid. However, the guard cell length and the density did not. And the second uh, hypothesis that the inhibition zones would be the same 
was also rejected because there were different uh, inhibition zones when among the different hydrosols that were isolated, the concentrated hydrosols that we used. Um, for our future directions, we would really like to look into the, the dihydroactinidiolide and see what function it actually has in the plant and why it's not evolving towards that plant in diploid and pyploid when they're replicating. We wanted to use also molecular methods to identify the bacterial morphs that occurred in the root associated and non-associated bacteria. And we would really like to acknowledge uh, Jim Crouch for letting us use the greenhouse, RJ Corey with his great help with the mass spec and GC, GC mass spec, uh, Nathan Hayborn with all the bacterial morphology help, and all the other teachers that helped us, and Eric Hammer to getting us started with this project. He collected the biomass, he dried it out, he weighed it out. He, he started this project, and we were really thankful for it.